Well, here we are. It's Friday, and uh, what's the date? July 22nd, 2022. Heat of the summer is just unbelievable around here this year. It's un I don't know how it is where all of you are, but uh, it's uh, it, we're up in the 90s today, and I guess it's going to be that way for the next few days, which is fine. And as you know, um, as we mentioned last week, uh, uh, things are a little bit quiet on the auction scene over in Europe because it's summer. As you know, everybody goes away in summer over there. They don't know they don't want to do much except go camping and visit and travel and, uh, and take a break for the year. So there they go, their month-long vacations. God bless them. All right. Uh, you know, what's interesting, though, is, it, is in Australia right now, there are a number of good auctions. Those of you that use the global pages, uh, you can go in and check them out. There's, a, I think, three pretty good auctions down there right now. But uh, uh, one of them is at Bonhams, and there's always the Australian site. I don't know why. But in Australia, when they run these their auctions down there, they're really skimpy on photographs. And the photographs are terrible quality. Uh, if you go to enlarge them, uh, they a lot of them tend to pixelate. They don't show pictures of the bottoms, and they don't date their stuff. And, and, and it's a it's a pretty good auction. Uh, there's some pretty good stuff in the auction, but uh, they they for some reason they do a terrible job dating. They're just a, putting a date in. You know, they have some Wan Lee material. You know, is it Wan Lee or is it just Mark Wan Lee? You know, they've, they've got to be a little clearer. Uh, but if you have some uh, tenacity, it's the kind of environment where you can make uh, some great purchases because a lot of people won't bother to ask for the pictures of the bottoms, ask for clarification on the aging, and uh, so forth. Uh, so uh, you, if, you're, if you use the pages, you might want well to check it out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that there were some good sales results last week. Veritas, this was on the invaluable section on the global pages. Veritas Art Auctions had their sale on the 20th, just two days ago. And they had things like this, this really beautiful pair of chin lung um, urns, uh, like memorial urns, basically. They're, they're, they're very similar to the urns you used to see on the tops of spires and cemeteries, as a matter of fact. Very classical, uh, 18th century, beautifully done. Uh, these were made, obviously, for the export market for Europe in China. Uh, nice relief work elegant colors and they look to be in fabulous condition and uh, the pair of them sold for ninety five hundred dollars which is a pretty good price but not outrageous the estimate i thought was very low and i, I mentioned it in a, in a video that i thought the estimate seemed a bit on the low side but uh, it got up there and, and then this doesn't of course include the buyer's premium i believe so they ended up selling for about eleven or twelve thousand uh, dollars with, with everything all in and done all right and the other thing that was on there was this this is a Really nice Chinese export, uh, uh, Yong Chen to, fam, uh, to Chin Lung period, Famil Rose uh, plate of the lute player. This is the kind of thing that was made for the Portuguese market um, in particular. Uh, a very, very nice example. You also find them in France and other places, but uh, they, these, this particular style and pattern turns up often in, in, in Portugal. And uh, this is a beautiful looking plate. And I, 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 you know, I think it went reasonably as all get out. It only, it only went for twelve hundred dollars with a twelve to sixteen hundred or twelve hundred euros with a twelve to sixteen hundred euro uh, estimate. I thought when I saw that, I thought, well, I could bring a couple of thousand anyway. Somebody got a good buy, I think, is what the deal was. And this plate was decent size, thirty-seven centimeters long, so it was about fifteen inches in length. Nice big plate. And uh, this Kangxi period Femi Ver dish, well-known pattern, pattern we see all the time. Uh, it was 12 inches in diameter, so it was technically, you know, we're getting into the charger range. But the thing that was nice about it was, and those of you that have had a lot of these and, and, and handled them over the years, one of the things that you always find on them, or often find, not always, but often, uh, the center is worn. And uh, this plate didn't seem to have any wear in the center at all. It was a rather nice example. The colors were still good and strong. And uh, somebody picked it up, I think, very reasonably. Uh, they paid 1,200 euros for it, plus the premium. Again, uh, it, it takes a little effort to buy from these companies because of the distance involved, if you're in the States in particular. But, it, you know, there are some good buys. And then on to this, this Portuguese market. Or, or export market with the with the boar's head handles, but it looks this these big rounded pots seem to turn up in Portugal and France for some reason. You don't see them often in England. You don't see them often, and certainly in America because they weren't they weren't ex bringing in China trade porcelain at the time this was made. 
uh, uh, simple as that. There was this was about 70, 60 or so years before they began that business. Um, but anyway, this was a nice one, and uh, I, I loved the uh, uh, pomegranate on the top there. Very nice, and they even painted the seeds in, so it's like you can look inside of it. It was very, very nice. Beautiful piece of porcelain, and again, uh, the, the price, I think, was uh, was in line. I thought the estimate was ridiculously low. Uh, uh, it was, it's ended up selling for 2,200 euros, which is, is perfectly fine. And uh, those of you that remember a few weeks ago, we talked about one of these turned up at an auction here in the States. It was some sort of basin or something. It was built into a sand. Maybe it was a round basin, but very similar to this. This is a bidet, of course, and they, these were made in the early, eight, uh, early 19th century, century, early 1800s or so. And uh, they, they made these, uh, not often, but they made them fairly often. This one had a crack in it. And uh, the, the one that sold a few weeks ago, you remember, it ended up with, built into a table, an English table on top of it, uh, ended up selling for three or $400. This one, um, wait, wait for it, sold for $1,700. And as I, I said at the time, I said, that's, that's the price range that you, you expect to see them in, typically, you know, $1,500, $1,200, $1,800, somewhere in there. Uh, so whoever got that other one got a great buy. This is the price they typically bring. Uh, so this brought 1,700 euros plus the premium. And uh, there, there you go. All righty. And then uh, lastly, from this, from this particular auction, I included this. This is a, a type of Kangxi uh, porcelain uh, platter that you've seen before, many of you, not all of you, but many of you, um, with, this, uh, with, this, with this outer border, this, uh, sh uh, this sort of shaped, ruffled sort of rim, and then the central scene with big blossoming flowers and ascending uh, birds. Uh, but very popular pattern. They, they, this was a, a well-known early export type that was uh, uh, sent over uh, to Europe uh, around 1710 or so, but beautiful quality. Uh, and I, I thought it was nice. And uh, somebody picked the thing up, I think, pretty reasonably for $2,600. This was a good size platter. It was uh, 33, uh, uh, it, was a, it was basically a foot wide and 43 centimeters long, so it was an 18-inch platter. That's a big platter, and, uh, and it was in good condition, and I think somebody got a very, very nice uh, uh, buy out of it. The other thing I wanted to mention was that also on the invaluable uh, on, on, uh, section, um, I'm, I'm using the, the, the images from their website because post-auction of invaluable makes it a nuisance to look at the pictures because they, they can't enlarge the, uh, all, the uh, secondary images, so I just, I thought I'd go here. This was the Roseberry sale that took place over in the UK this week. Uh, I, I, I had mentioned in the previews that there were a couple, I know a number of you collect Katani because I hear from you through the inquiries on the identification assistant uh, service we run. And uh, I had mentioned this to an, a, a several of you and I hope one of you bought these. These were, this was a wonderful piece of Katani. This is a big charger. Uh, it was 36 centimeters in diameter, so about 15 or 16 inches in beautiful condition, ended up selling for 220 pounds. That is a great buy. That is an absolutely stupendous buy. And somebody bought this pair, and these are very rare. Um, uh, another big pair, a big Katani plate. This, this is a pair of them. They were identical. And these, I think, were even bigger, were they? 46 centimeters, yeah. So they were about 19 inches wide each, and a pair. And uh, they ended up selling for 850 year, uh, pounds plus the premium. But always remember that the, we, we, we generally figure that if you have a single of, an, of, a, of something uh, and it's, let's say, worth $500, if you have a pair of them, um, basically a pair is worth around two and a half to three times the price of a single, typically. So if, if, if a single one of these plates is worth two or $300, a pair of them is worth right about what it brought, about, about 850. I think the uh, estimate was, was a bit on the conservative side. And I don't think, if somebody had said they paid $1,500 for these platters, I wouldn't think it was a bad buy uh, because these were absolutely great bits of Gutani. And those of you that understand it and enjoy it, um, uh, you got to look hard, but these higher end Kutani wares turn up periodically, and this was a, another pair of them. They were very, very nice. And then these, we had talked about these a bit. This, uh, I talked about them on the uh, Global Member uh, video, the weekly video we do over there. <clears throat> um, 
unbelievably unusual, very, very rare. Um, from what I can see, they're either late Qinlong or early Jai Jing period, somewhere in there, a matching pair of punch balls and, you, and, 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 and made for export, but done in the Chinese taste. These, ha I thought these were absolutely great. And um, they did unbelievably well. They had, a, they had a very, very low estimate. They were sold by Nye and Company, and they had a $500 to $1,000 estimate on them. This was out over in, in uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey. They ended up selling for $50,000. And it has to be because they're uh, export bowls, Chinese taste, and big, okay? They're, these were nice size. Uh, they were 15 inches in diameter each. Uh, which is quite unusual. That's a big, that's a good size bowl. You got a pair of them and you have them in a very unusual pattern. And uh, um, there you go. I didn't think they'd bring that. I, I think I, I, I suggested they might bring five or 10,000, but uh, 50,000. So obviously somebody did a lot of research on them, looked up, maybe found out something we don't know, but uh, very, very nice. And uh, this, uh, an absolutely terrific tankard. <clears throat> uh, 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 late 18th century, beautiful condition, nice enameling, no damage, uh, nice big uh, gutsy strap handles on it. And um, uh, you see the strap handle, see you can't load them, but anyway, they had very exuberant strap handles. Somebody picked this fine little mug up for just $200. This was in uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Um, and uh, we, we, we talked about it a bit on the, on the global side prior to the sale because I thought the bowl and the mug and some other things they had were awfully nice. And, um, and, and uh, so one of them went, went for, under, I, think, I think, went for a very, this went for a fabulous buy. And the other, the pair of bowls brought very, very strong money. Uh, so it was an interesting result. All right. And now over to eBay. What's happening over there? Uh, uh, these are happening. This, this little Kang Chi bowl with the uh, yellow ground that was on there. Uh, I mentioned it uh, a couple of weeks ago when it first went up. I thought it was awfully nice. I thought, I thought the color was appealing. I thought that the, uh, the, the enamel selection was good. It had a little bit of a chip out of the top here. They put a big red line around it. And uh, here are all the precious objects and everything, but nicely done. And uh, it ended up selling for $1,075 with, with the little chips. Not a bad price. And uh, I guess one of you bought the, the Golan books because uh, uh, shortly after we posted last week's newsletter page, these were gone. Um, and I, whoever, if you got them, enjoy them. Um, uh, they're fun to read. Uh, but always keep in mind that a lot of the books that were written back in the 1920s and 30s do have misinformation in them. Um, um, uh, it's, it's just, it's just uh, uh, part of it, it's part, part of the fun. You'll read things, if you've been at it for a while, you'll read things in there, and like Hobson's book is full of little mistakes uh, because they've done more research. It wasn't that he was, he was, he wasn't he was misinformed. He was informed, but the information that he was getting was inaccurate for the time, or inaccurate at the time, and they just didn't know it. And, and since then, we've all watched them you know, redate and change um, attributions on porcelains and ceramics and bronzes and things because they've learned so much more. They've, they've been able to study more, been able to get into some of the uh, archives uh, uh, with, with historic notes on when things were made and how they were made. So, you know, we're constantly uh, seeing updates to what you know, to what we know. But this book is fun to read and uh, it's interesting. Um, I think it's also very interesting for what were considered, what the things that they illustrated were considered to be the most important pieces sort of of the day, some of the really great pieces. And some of them today are, you know, fantastically rare. You're never going to see them. But they're, but then they're also maybe sharing a page with something that's fairly common and, you know, a four or $500 piece of porcelain these days. So it's, it's, an, interesting, uh, it's an interesting look. It really is. And I hope one of you got it and I hope you enjoy reading it. And I think 75 bucks was a great buy. All right, there you go. And then over here, this was uh, Chamberlain Antiques finished up on, um, on uh, I guess it was on Monday night. And uh, he had a number of good things. And, and one of them was this, this, uh, uh, they call them hunt balls. Chin lung period, uh, eight, circa 1775 to 80, 85, somewhere in there. These uh, China trade hunt balls with the uh, English scenes on them, beautifully painted. <clears throat> and these were adopted from engravings and prints at the time. Uh, so the artist could, and then the artist copied them as best they could, and then 
uh, colored them in. And uh, look at all the dogs at the bottom. Look at all, all the hunting dogs. Uh, uh, I think the Chinese went a little overboard with the hunting dogs at times, but uh, uh, there you go. And uh, it's, it's that classic scene, classic color palette of, the, of that 1870s, 80s period. And uh, the bowl went for $4,617. And it was, I think, 15 or 16 inches. Oh, no, it was only 11 inches. 11 inches and still brought that. Whoa, good for <laughs> Good for Josh. Uh, there you go. It's a rare ball. So they've always been rare. They've always been highly desirable. So, um, you know, $4,600 is what they go for, I guess. I don't follow the hunt balls all that closely. I prefer the hong balls better, but that's just me. Uh, here you have uh, that Kangxi uh, sectional. You know, it's a double gourd, but it's squared double gourd vase. I thought this was awfully nice. It had some nips out of the edges up around here some fritting and so forth which is very very common on these um you, you're always shocked when you don't see it if you see these without fritz on them you should be suspicious a little bit uh, because it's, it's such a rare occasion but this these were authentic they were nice looking here's the bottom you know that bluish uh, glaze on there and uh, it did pretty well it brought 1913 dollars and i think that's sort of what we thought it might bring last week i think we thought 1500 to 2000 uh, so there you go but get, uh, dating things these days is getting tougher and tougher because the, as we saw with the, with the bidet, that one, that big basin brought 1,700 euros plus premium, about $2,200. And then a few a week before that, a round one built into a nice, very nice expensive wooden stand went for 350. And uh, <clears throat> that's the sort of unevenness you can expect, I think, until uh, uh, Mr. Biden can figure out his job. And I shouldn't say that, but. He doesn't seem to be very uh, up on things. Um, and we can get some of the uh, uh, troubles around the world squared away. I think you've got to see some real unevenness in the market as the stock market, uh, you know, is wobbling around until it gets feet back under it. <clears throat> It'll happen. It'll happen. Uh, but uh, it's going to take a year or two. All right. And then there was this, the Edward Farmer uh, desk set. We talked about this last week. Beautifully done. Nice looking piece. Uh, uh, looks like a jade cylinder and then the silver mounts. Popular style of uh, reworking jade, uh, jade and Chinese bits back in the day. And uh, ended up selling for $861, which is I think is pretty reasonable. That didn't seem like a terribly big number. And then this, the uh, jadeite guanyin figure with the basket of flowers. Late Qing, early Republic period, as most of them are. Very, very few of these were made before that. Uh, and... Uh, Sold for nine hundred and four dollars. This wasn't terribly big, as I recall, right? It was seven, yes, yeah, seven inches tall. wasn't one of the big twelve, thirteen inch ones. It was a bit smaller, but nicely done. Nice color. I like the green in it, and uh, nine hundred dollars. So that's 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 a pretty good deal. And then over here, the the uh, uh, rank badges. Oh, where did they go? All right, well, you saw the rank badge. I don't know why that closed. But at any rate, it was a pair of rank badges. They brought about $1,600. They weren't great. We're going to see some really good rank badges in a second. But uh, um, I just thought I'd throw those in. And then they had this, this jade by disc with the with the uh, chimeras climbing around on top of it. Uh, looks looks to me, the carving looks like uh, probably late Qing, uh, nine, second half of the 19th century or something. Maybe a little older. Uh, but at any rate, it's got the, the it's got the, uh, the, the 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 stipple the sort of knobbed back that you see on on these on the very early archaistic jades. They used to do it this this pattern on both sides. Sometimes you have these little the little bumps on these bi discs. At any rate, and then later they started doing them in the Ming Dynasty. They started doing them with chimeras and creatures on top of them crawling around and so forth. This was a nice one. Ended up bringing fifty six hundred and ninety eight dollars. There you go. And then over here to this, we get the page to load. There we go. Uh, the um, uh, Chinese ceramics from the Top Copy Sarai Museum. Uh, these were uh, really nice. I, 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 I include them because I think that uh, building up a, a reference library of books is just as important as buying the stuff. And uh, th this book has some great, great information. It was written by Regina Crowell and uh, John Ayers, two of the, the great minds on this very topic. This is what they do and uh, en encyclopedic knowledge uh, and it's a three volume set very very good and in the end it did pretty well it ended up selling for twelve hundred dollars which which is a fairly strong price but um they they 
they have the information in them and that's what you need you need the information you need top quality pictures so there you go all right and then uh let's see what this is oh the blue uh the blue ming bowl i i just threw this and i just like this i like this type of ming bowl sort of loosely drawn gutsy uh, enameling here's the uh, uh, underglaze blue here you have this the the wisteria and sort of a, a variation on wisteria or grapes grape pattern i guess some of it looks a little bit like a, i don't know whether they're trying to do wisteria flowers or or grapes but it was a pattern this pattern you do see on ming wares fairly often and uh there's the uh the, the bottom of it absolutely right as rain and uh about, this bowl was over seven inches in diameter and somebody picked it up i think pretty reasonably for uh, uh 338 dollars all righty and uh the other thing i wanted to mention was um uh these rank bad these these two rank badges this one and this one um this one ended up selling it was it was up over ten thousand dollars last week and uh i think whoever was bidding on them wanted to make sure he got them so he hit them hard right up front and uh, this was i think at ten thousand three hundred last week when when we we put them in there they went to that price almost immediately 56 bids went for ten thousand seven hundred dollars but as i mentioned last week these were fabulous uh because of the condition they looked new that's that's how good the condition is um, uh, the, the color is all unfaded, and th these were nice, uh, probably first half of the 19th century badges. Beautifully done. And uh, th this pair uh, sold for $10,700, and uh, this pair sold for $4,750. All right, it just it didn't have quite the appeal that the other two had. It was more typical pattern. Uh, didn't have all the negative space. But again, stupendous condition. Just absolutely great condition. Uh, and uh, that's why they brought that much money because I know some of you some people are going to be wondering why because typically we see rank badges sell and they usually go for under two thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars a thousand nine hundred seven you know in lower prices these took off because of the condition and uh, so far I haven't seen any weakening in the silk market I'll tell you uh, I expected to see it I expected the, the you know because the porcelain markets gotten pretty uneven pretty uneven <clears throat> for speculative buying right now if you're building a collection you've got some discretionary money scatter around bids because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get some you're gonna get some pieces these days uh because i the the intense buying out of china i think is a little bit on hold for the time being and i'm very interested to see what happens this september and heading into the winter uh with 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 the issues um over there and the issues here in in, in the global economy um, how much money is still going to be on the table for uh, discretionary purchases? Because you also have people that, that when things get bad, want to put their money into hard assets like art. So that may play into it as well. All right. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's always interesting. Um, what I wanted to look at next were a few of the things that are coming up. Uh, there is this. Uh, this is an interesting plate. It's it's a it's an early late 18th early 19th century export ware plate, uh, probably for the Persian or Indian market. Uh, they made similar wares for both places, and both were recipients of of, of export wares. Uh, but some of them went to Persia in this pattern. Some of them went to India in this pattern, uh, and of just a nice looking plate, very very nice. And uh, it's only up to uh, what is it? It's got one bid. It's got four days to go. It closes Tuesday. It'll be on the uh, newsletter page. All these pieces will be on the newsletter page, as we always do. And this just went up. This is some really good stuff is selling this. This is a particularly nice uh, spotted deer pattern, Chinese export, Chin Lung, uh, circa you know, 1780s and 90s uh, platter. Nice one, though. And it looks to be in good shape. The, the shading of the, of the cobalt is good. The overall composition is good. It's nice looking. It's a very nice looking, nice looking platter, and uh, it just went up. It's got one bid, uh, went up last night or early this morning, um, and it's got a bid right now of uh, un just a little under one pound. It'll get up there. It should bring three or four hundred dollars, but we'll see. We'll see. We can always hope. And then this, this closes in five days. It's only up to nineteen dollars, and I, I know there are a lot of copies of these around right now, but this doesn't look like a copy to me. This looks like a, a legit transitional period jar. From what I'm seeing, and uh, <clears throat> I think it's pretty nice. 
and uh, I think it'll take off. The seller has not dated it. All right, he may not know, um, um, or, or, or if it is or it isn't, but uh, or he may think it's a, like a 19th century Qing example. Um, this is a type of, of jar that they did in the transitional period, the transitional pattern, that flat unglazed bottom, the outlining, the way the birds are drawn, the tone of it, and then the color um, of the paste on top. Uh, this, this, the shading of the unglazed paste all looks fine to me as transitional period. And uh, so it'll be on the newsletter page. This is a nice, I think this is a very, very nice jar. And it's not enormous. It is, uh, what is it? it it's, eight, it's 10 inches tall. Yeah, it's about 10 inches tall with the cover, uh, roughly. Uh, but it's a very, very nice quality and looks to be in good condition. So I think, and, and it's got a nice, you can see the looting line actually going right around it. That little line running through the birds. They make these in two sections. That's how they throw them on the wheel. They throw the bottom on the wheel, they throw the top on a wheel, and then the potter works them together and smooths it down as best he can. But there's always, there's always a little bit of a seam if they loot them together or join them. Um, looting and joining mean basically the same thing. Uh, and they always show up after the firing because of shrinkage in the kilns and so forth. So uh, anyway, that's a nice, I think that's a nice looking pot. And uh, I think the same seller has this. This is a nice little uh, late Qing, early Republic period uh, uh, cosmetic box uh, with a couple of figures uh, by a, a goat cart. Um, let's see, there it is. There it is. Nicely decorated, nicely decorated. Has a Kangxi mark on the bottom. It's obviously not Kangxi. It's, it's probably more likely re early Republic than late Qing, but regardless, it's a very attractive little box. It's uh, up to a dollar ninety, a dollar one point nine one pounds. Five days to go. Uh, it's. I don't know why that's not higher. That should be up. That should be up to three or four hundred dollars by now. Uh, and then this, uh, just for those of you that like uh, uh, that collect this pattern, this is a pattern that you see fairly often in export wares. The the vase and flowers and the butterflies all framed like this. Uh, late Qing, uh, Dyna, late Qing. I mean uh, late Qin Lung period. Uh, and this is a, a, a one that's coming up with a ruffled rim. So if you're looking to uh, looking for a sugar bowl or, or, or something like that uh, to, to go in your collection, they've they've dated it a little bit too early. Um, he's dated it 1740. This bowl wasn't made in 1740. It was made around 1780. Um, uh, but it, it's 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 a quibble. It's a quibble. I shouldn't quibble. Uh, and then this this is very nice. Uh, uh, Dwan stone carving, 19th century, uh, wooden frame, um, uh, very well done. Uh, should should bring oh, three to five thousand dollars by the time it sells. Right now, it's up to about eighty or so. Uh, nice looking, nice looking thing. It's a beautiful example. Actually, the coloring is good. Uh, and Dwan stones, I don't know if you know about Dwan stones, but Dwan stones are made out of volcanic rock, and it's layers of rock. And what they do is they cut layers of the rock so that there's uh, different different colors at different thicknesses as you go through it. So you have the, you have brown areas and green areas, and then what they do is they carve through it and they cameo the stone by bringing up in relief the different colored layers and then making something of them. It's technically extremely time consuming, and um, I, I think they're one of the one of the one of the most interesting uh, crafts they do in China. It's sort of on the idea of um, certain types of lacquerware where they build up multiple layers of lacquer and uh, and they do the layers in different colors and then they carve down through until they get the desired color and then they create sort of cameo effects. Same thing here. All right, and uh, there you go. All right, and then this, the pair of shrimp dishes. These are nice. These are a really nice pair of shrimp dishes. Uh, the gilding on them looks good. The uh, Mandarin figures here and here are, are, are crisp and clean, very well done. Um, the, these are better than, quite a bit better than the typical Mandarin uh, examples. These were probably made uh, around, uh, oh, probably late, mid, late 1830s to 40s, before the middle of, the, before the mid 19th century, uh, the middle of the 19th century. Be beautiful quality. The uh, groundwork here is good. The shading of this is good. They're holding out. They're out, here they are, they're out rolling out a scroll and some ladies are looking on. It's a really charming scene. They're up to $622. I suspect they're going to go up probably up, they may end up closer to 900 or maybe even 1000 uh, because the quality is so good on them. But we'll see. We'll check back next week and see how they did. All righty. And uh, there, 
a couple of more rank badges on here. These are closing in three days. These are old ones. These are nice old ones. These are first half of the 19th century. Um, these are older. You notice the colors are softer, but the quality of the, the stitching is very, very good. It's a pair. They're up to $2,700. Uh, and they close on Monday. So if you're a rank badge buyer, get on it. <laughs> and uh, what else? Um, oh, this. This is um, a Super Shrink. Uh, a very nice uh, kettle on stand by Wang Hing. Beautifully done. Uh, he, he And he's a very sharp silver guy. I don't know if you've ever bought anything from him. He used to, I, I've said it before, he used to be in, here in Massachusetts. And I think, I think he's a former psychologist or psychiatrist maybe or something. That's why he has the word super shrink is in his name. But anyway, he's also an extremely knowledgeable uh, dealer of silver and of all kinds of silver, Chinese silver, English silver, French silver. He knows silver. And uh, he's down in the Carolinas now, North Carolina now. But uh, very, very um, uh, good stuff. He always has good stuff. I've never had uh, any, seen anything that he did that was I, I thought was uh, not great. All right. So that's about it for the week. So we'll be loading up the, uh, the newsletter page uh, uh, right here on the site uh, later on this afternoon. You'll see, by the time you see this video, it'll all be on there. And uh, uh, if, if you don't get the notification, we send out an email to uh, everybody once the uh, newsletter page has been updated. And if you don't get it, sign the, come in here and sign up for it. It's absolutely free. And... Uh, if you want to join the global member pages, we always are looking for the support because we're getting into doing more and more things that cost much more money. <laughs> but uh, uh, here we go. All righty. And uh, uh, oh, um, I don't think I mentioned it, but we did the, we did do the video on uh, I think I did at the beginning the video on Portugal and uh, the, the wedding of Charles II. And if you haven't seen it, please go over and watch it. It's pretty interesting. It's a little bit long, but um, uh, it's, a, it's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting story. It's one of the one of the most interesting historic stories uh, regarding a wedding and what it did uh, and how it changed life in England. Uh, uh, ir 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 irreversibly changed it. Just uh, it affected their art culture, uh, uh, their whole scene um, from from you know table to decorations uh, and uh, what became valuable and why and. Is in, and how it made the East India Company the uh, probably the largest company in the history of the world, even to this day. Uh, and I'm t I, I, you know, for its day, I would say the East India Company was twice the size of of, of uh, Tesla. It was an enormous company in 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 power. I mean, in size, it was bigger than Amazon, bigger than all of them. There was nothing like the East India Company when they're they're at peak. And uh, I, I found the whole story. I always find the story of that company fascinating. It's no longer there. And I, I read somewhere, ironically, that the, and it may not be true, but I, I read somewhere that the, <clears throat> the old uh, uh, British East India Company building now belongs, ironically, to a company from India. <laughs> Think about that. All right. Have a great week. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a comment. I love the comments. I've got a lot of comments on the on the video we did earlier this week. I enjoyed reading them. I read them all. And uh, thanks so much. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos. Have a great week. Great weekend. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.